Guitar and Excel spreadsheet creation mapping the path to fretboard enlightenment part number nine. Get ready because it's time for our guitar skills to Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if you're using a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, if you do have access to this workbook, we got a whole bunch of tabs down below at this point, including the example tab, the finished work, the end product, in essence, the answer key, a bunch of starting point tabs tying into the video presentations as we work through the long practice problem, the blank tab representing the blank worksheet we started with and the one that we're going to be continuing with at this time. Let's give a quick recap of what we have done thus far. We started out listing the musical alphabet, but we put it in a column type of format and we noticed that it's difficult to kind of sing along with the alphabet when you add the sharps and flats because you're like A, B, C, what? No, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, and I notice we have an error here. It should be, I'm gonna represent the sharp in a flat like that. F sharp, G, G sharp, and then back to A. It's hard to sing along with that, and it's even more difficult to say it backwards, right? Because then you're like, okay, G sharp or wait, that should be like an A flat maybe because I'm going the other way. G, G flat, F, E, uh, E flat, C, it's difficult. That's hard to do, and it's, it's especially hard to jump from here, like a C to here, and try to say, well, how far, what's the actual distance between those two things musically? That's kind of difficult to do because you can't use math to do that. So we numbered it and said, what if we just say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We can say that backwards, forwards. We can subtract the numbers if I want to know the musical distance absolute distance not relative distance between an f and a b if i know an f is a nine and a b is a three i could do math and then i could you know math is useful so then so we numbered it and then we put the number and the letter together and then we made our fretboard out of that which again we did one with just the numbers these are the absolute numbers representing the notes which is a lot cleaner to look at. We did one down here. This is the one we're gonna use most of the time. But if we were to see the, the notes as numbers, this would be a lot easier and kind of cleaner uh, to look at if we got really good at being able to convert back and forth between the numbers and the letters. It looks kind of like that game that you have to, you know, you have that grid of numbers and you're trying to add everything up to nine. I think it's like called Ahsoka. Ahsoka, that's a, no, that's a Jedi. That's a, that's a female. Star Wars Jedi, I don't know, but I'm sure people know what that game is because I've played it, it's good. So then then we went over here and we built our musical, our, our scale. So we started with the C scale because that's common. We used our formula, which is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, uh, in order to then map out. And if we used our numbers, again, the whole, whole halves are just representing distance. So we can see that as two, two, one, two, 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 one. And then we could just do a running balance and say, well, if I'm on note four, which is a C, two notes up is a six, two notes up is an eight, two no one note up is a nine. So we just have our standard accounting form formula running balance. And then I can just convert this number to the, the letter or the letter and the number if I want by tying it in with an X look up to this table. And then we created our major scale information that has our the, the, the numbers for the scale that we are in. We have the notes of the scale that we are in, and then we can list out the, the components to create the chords, the one, three, five being the chords of the major and minor chords, and then we can add more fancy stuff the sevens the nines the elevens and thirteens we did this way and then of course we did this way adding the uh, letters in we also made a circle which helps us to kind of visualize how we constructed this instead of looking at and visualizing a piano that goes on forever for example we can look at it as a circle that goes infinitely around in a circle and that's how you can see how we kind of built 
if you use the starting point you just skip every other every other note in the circle and just keep going around the circle you'll see how we kind of construct these uh, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. Then we copy this entire thing and said we want to look at the relative modes, starting with the minor or Aeolian, because it's, uh, it's the one we usually use in Western music, the major and minor, and then we'll get into more exotic modes. So the next thing I want to do here is say, okay, this we had this whole thing mapped out. It looks good, but this bit is is wrong now because I would like to start this time with the uh, with an A, right? So 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 the, the A needs to be the one, uh, but the 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 capitals and the lowercase, which are going to represent whether or not we pay it, play a major or minor chord, are not being represented properly. So you'll recall that with the minor, all we did is we we basically used the same set of notes. And we said we're going to take the sixth note, which is an A in our circle here, and then we're just going to map everything out as if that's the one using all the same notes. So it's just using all the same notes. We're just going to say that's our central or starting or tonic kind of note. And so now everything is mapped out properly. We have the same notes, but when I list out one through seven, I, I need to be listing out the, the A as the one. So in other words, if I if I looked at this one over here, this six needs to be the one. So I want to represent it as a one in the minor, but I want it to be a lowercase because just like we have it over here, we're, if we were to construct a scale from it, we'll get that same minor scale because we're using the same scale pattern, just starting from a different point. So, so now I have to do a fancy formula. Is there a fancy formula where I can where I can then adjust these so I don't have to adjust them every time once I copy this over. And there is, and it's pretty fancy. So <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, you'll notice over here that that the 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 ones that we build a major uh, chord with are the one, four, five. It's useful to practice the one, four, five oftentimes in both major and minor because those are the ones that are gonna be like the same. So you'll learn all the major shapes. And then the two, three and six are going to be minor and then we've got that weird thing with the diminished where we've got that we tried to indicate that with a dot which might be a little bit more difficult for us to pick up but we'll give it a shot okay and we built this roman numeral thing with this roman numeral and we made it lowercase by embedding this roman numeral all right so let's try to do a fancy formula with taking into consideration all of that stuff so i'm going to delete what we have in here right now and we're gonna say, all right, let's try to do this in a fancy way so I can copy it over everywhere. So we're gonna say, this is gonna be if equals if brackets. Now there are multiple conditions that could be met in order for us to wanna have a capital or uppercase versus a lowercase Roman numeral, noting that the uppercase represents the idea that we're gonna be constructing a major chord as opposed to a minor chord. So we're gonna embed an or function in the if function, the or idea being that we have all of these conditions that we can list. If any one of them are met, then we're gonna do something to it. In our case, if any condition is met, we'll make it uppercase Roman numeral. That's opposed to or the opposite of the and function, which would mean if we list out a bunch of conditions, all of them would have to be met in order for us to apply whatever we want to apply, in this case, it being uppercase Roman numeral. All right, so we're gonna list the conditions. So this number one, which is an A, if that is equal to putting my cursor back down, going back on over to the major or Ionian, if it's equal to either a four, a nine, or an 11, then I want it to be uppercase. Why four, nine, or 11? Because those are the one, four, five in the major scale. So, and that, and those are the upper case, or those are the ones that are going to be constructing a major chord from. Now, b even though we're going to adjust the ordering of the notes, that when the notes come up in our in our other modes, they're still going to be constructing the same, the same uh, uh, major and minor scale. So that's the first condition. Next one, if this, I have to list this one out again. If that note is equal to the uh, the four, which is all right, which is a nine, right? The, the relative position four, 
which is a nine note, if it's equal to that, th or one more condition, comma, if this note again is equal to, putting my cursor back down, the relative position five, which is an 11, if it's equal to either of those three numbers, then I'm gonna close up the or function. I haven't closed the if function. The if function is still open, so I'm on comma. Next argument in the if function, if, if any of these are met, what do we want it to do? We want to have it an uppercase Roman numeral, which is the default. So I'm just going to put Roman or Roman tab of this number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The one representing relative position one in the minor, in the minor scale. Closing that up, what if it's not met? Well, if it's not met, then it's either going to be a minor or diminished, which means we want to be representing it with a lower case. So I'm not gonna worry about the diminish yet. We'll talk about that in a second. So let's just say that we're gonna say it's gonna be lowercase. So I'm gonna say lower. So we, and then we embed the Roman, Roman. And so there it is. And then I'm gonna pick up the uh, number here, close up the brackets, close up the brackets and enter. And I think it's gonna hopefully pick. So then if I double click on that, now if I copy this down, note that anything over here I, I want it to be absolute. I don't want these to move when I copy it down. So I'm going to go back on over and say this one, AM5, F4 on the keyboard, making it absolute. This one, AM8, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and number, making it absolute. This one, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and number, making it absolute, and then enter. So there we have it as a lowercase. So it's still number one in Roman numerals, but it's lowercase. That makes sense because we're talking about the six here because it was an, an A, which is the sixth note, is now the one note. So we want a one, but we want it to be lowercase. Now, if I copy that down, let's see if it copies down like we would think. Copying it down. So there we have it. Now, now the three, that three represents uh, the seven. Notice that's the diminished note. So it's lowercase over here, but I wasn't able to put that little dot in it, which I'd kind of like to be able to do. And then here is uh, a, the four over here. That was, that was, um, the four was the one and it's uppercase. So this one should be uppercase over here. So if I go over here, that four is now, is now a three position, but it's, it's still going to construct an uppercase. So in other words, if I look at these, I can still construct these chords, even though they're not in the same order, the construction of the chords will basically be the same. In other words, the, the one, three, five will be the same. The distance of the three, uh, when I'm looking at the minors will be a, a whole half or three notes away. And the distance of the majors uh, will be whole, whole or four notes uh, away. So that's going to be the general idea. Now, now I could say, well, is there any way I can get it so that I can make this two have the dot in it? That would be really pretty neat. So let's try that. It's going to get messy. So if I go in here and analyze this formula, the first part is good, meaning if it's equal to the one, four, five relative positions in the major scale, we want to have it to be uppercase. But there's two branches on the lowercase. So I'm going to embed another if kind of formula on the lowercase side of things because we want it either to be lowercase or lowercase with a dot like that. So then the way we might do it, the first way you might think to do it is to say, well, I'm going to put another if and then an or and say if it equals this, this or this, then we want you to have it to be lowercase and then the lowercase with the dot. However, it might be a little bit faster to first think about the lowercase with a dot because there's only one condition there and then have everything else be uh, lowercase without a dot. So let's try to do this. If I, if I go back on over here and I, and I double click on this formula. So we've, this is where we completed the first condition. If it's not true, we have this. We just said lowercase. Now, I think it's actually easier just to delete the whole thing, this last bit. And now we have the open if if this first condition is false. If it's false, we have another branch, another tree branch that we got. We have two things that we might do. We will, so we embed another if function. And we're gonna say that if 
and we're going to pick up this number again we're always working with this number if that number was equal to and let's just point starting to the diminished one if it was equal to this diminished one which was a three then that's the weird one where that we want to have a dot next to it so how can we do that to put a dot next to it so if that was true if that's true then uh comma then what do we want you to do with it well we want to have it to be lowercase with a dot so we want it to be lower so that's embedding the lower then roman so now there's the roman numeral in there of the number which in this case is the one looking at the relative uh positions in the scale and then closing that up and then i'm going to try to add a dot which is a text i'm going to add a text to it to do that you i'm going to tie it together with an and and then put quotes around the text of a dot quotes around the text of a dot so that's what we want to have uh if it's if that's met if it's not met then comma we just want it to be uh, a lower case and I'm missing another bracket over here. So I need a bracket here. And there we have it. Because that's closing up the lower component. So this second if is still open now. So now the next comma, here's my argument bar, has popped up. And we're saying, if it's false, what do we want it to do? We want you to have a lower, and then we're going to say Roman, and then of that number one. Of that number one. All right quite convoluted we're going to close that up but that should work now this this one that's outside again we also want that to be absolute we don't want it to move when we pull down so the one that's in am put my cursor there f4 making it absolute and enter and hopefully it's going to close up the brackets let's copy it down and see if it does what we would expect so there it is it put the dot next to that one wow that was amazingly complicated now, the next thing we might want to think about is when I copy this entire thing over to the next mode, which will be Dorian that we'll work on next time, are these absolutes going to get in the way? And I don't think they are because we're still going to always be drawing back to uh, the major scale. But note, when, when I looked at these items last time and I went in here and I tried to unabsolute everything, I want to take the time to just mention here that it might have been better for me to actually enter the absolutes in there to populate this one and then go back in there once they've been populated and remove the absolute value so I can copy the whole thing over without it getting messed up. That probably would have been a faster, more efficient way. I just want to uh, kind of point that out as we're working on our Excel skills here. So now I think, I think this is right now. It pulls down to this side now as well because this is just being equal to the ones above it. So it should be correct down there. It's also populating in our wheel now. So now we have the same wheel, but the number one is now being pulled in from here. So you'll recall when I, when I see this in a circle, when I looked at it over here, let's look at the letters so I can see the letters in it. We started with a C and, and then we went around the wheel C, D, E, uh, F, G, A, B, going around the wheel thusly. And then we have the numbers on the wheel, which could be useful for me to kind of see how we're constructing. I think it's a better visual tool to see how we're constructing our chords. So that same thing is happening here. Let's see it down here. So now the first, the number one relative position one, if we rearrange everything in the minor, means that now we have this as the number one, which is a lower case because it's going to be constructing a minor chord and then we have the number two that's when we get to the diminished that has the nice dot and then uh the number three is, is a c and then everything looks like it's populating properly I, hopefully i got everything correct we'll test it out with the worksheet when we practice with it later but i think everything is looking pretty good thus far so now next thing next time we're going to try to copy this whole thing over to and do the the other modes starting with the dorian mode and see if everything copies over properly and see if we can tweak any of our formulas to make it as easy as possible to copy all the modes to the right and then try to copy the modes below it as well and then we'll also copy over our fretboards so that we can have them right next to whatever we're working with it's going to be great